Hey there YouTubers, it's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. And we're going to talk about the best Ethernet cable for gaming. Now, apart from the fact that you probably are aware that Wi-Fi is not the ideal transmission medium for doing gaming, especially online gaming, did you know that your quality of your Ethernet cable, specifically that being patch cords, could dramatically affect your frame rate, your ping times, because a lot of patch cords on the market aren't so good. And we're gonna kind of go over how to tell the difference between a good patch cord and a bad patch cord and how it can affect your gaming. Nothing's more embarrassing than, than uh, having some lag and then getting yourself uh, having to respawn somewhere. So stick around because we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about patch cords. We're gonna talk about quality and speed and what's going to get you the best lowest latency best lowest lag and best frame rate possible so catch you be right back you know that you want to frag not lag as a gamer you probably are aware that when it comes to like wi-fi routers and wi-fi technology in general, there's potentially quite a few issues even around the latest iterations of Wi-Fi. Signal penetration through walls, you've got interference from other networks, and despite manufacturers' claims about Wi-Fi, it's getting better, it's true, but you, there are so many issues around it. You've got additional lag imposed due to the wireless packets flying back and forth. You've got multiple devices on the network. So there's a lot of potential for problems. Now, if you're using a smartphone, or a, a tablet, you know, you probably don't have an, a, an alternative. You're going to be using the Wi-Fi signal, and that's fine. You're watching YouTube videos like maybe this one, or, or perhaps you're just doing some basic web surfing, and that that's great. But if you're gaming, that's a different situation. Now you want something that actually works and works well. You should be using a wired network. And if you're using a wired network, you want to be using the best possible cable you can get. <music> A lot of home gamers, they have, for example, a cable modem and they have a wireless router and then they have a gaming console. All of those things can be hooked up via wire and more than likely you're not stringing solid copper cable and wiring up inside your walls and stuff like that. So you're probably going to be using path clips and true cable cells patch cords. Now we have a video, our introductory video of our Cat 6 patch cords and what varieties we carry in the lengths. Also importantly, we discuss why our patch cords are better than our competitors patch cords by and large. And that is discussed in a, another video where we compare true cables patch cords to the competitors patch cords. And you're going to find out the vast majority of patch cords out there are 75% or better fail pad cord testing. And that's not a good thing when you're trying to frag but not lag. I'm aware that you're 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 gaming. You want the best you can get. Ideally, you're gonna want a pad cord that passes a hundred percent of the time that you don't have to worry about. One that you know will work because these patch cords are what's known as component rate. They're certified in the factory one by one on a cable certifier that measures performance, not just a, a simple wire map, which tells you really nothing. It's actually certified against the standard. And our patch cords also are designed in such a way that even at a relatively tight bend at the termination, you don't lose performance because of the way the connector and boot is designed on these patch cords. Also a benefit is that these patch cords are thin gauge, 28 gauge. So they are very useful for keeping out of the way, for hiding, you know, you don't want a bunch of thick patch cords running all over your place. So, how do you get the best possible experience? Well, take your cable modem, and we're assuming you have a cable modem. Now, you could have an all-in-one cable modem, okay? We'll talk about that situation in just a moment. But you're going to plug your Ethernet port that's on the back of your cable modem into any one of the ports on the back of your Wi-Fi route. And now... That gives you a nice, solid, guaranteed link between the cable modem and the router. No packet loss associated with the cable itself. I can't talk about your internet service provider. I'm sure you have plenty to say about that. At least the cable is good. We know that much. Now, from the Wi-Fi router, you want to hook up your gaming console, which almost assuredly has a port. 
So whether it be an Xbox or a PlayStation or something like that. So plug in a patch cord into the rear of your Wi-Fi router here. And then take the other end of that particular patch cord and plug it directly into your console. Now you've got the best possible speed and lowest possible latency with a good patch cord for the best possible gaming experience you can get. And that, and that really is the best experience you can get. Now, if, for example, let's say you have a, a router that is an all-in-one unit. That's not an unusual situation. A lot of, a lot of times you may be renting uh, from your ISP an all-in-one device where the Wi-Fi signal is being generated by the device. It's a cable modem as well, or maybe a fiber modem. And that, that's fine. It's going to have a four-port switch on the back. So in that case, just simply plug in the patch cord to any one of the four ports and then go ahead and plug in your gaming console. Now it's a even simpler situation and now you've got a single patch cord involved and that's gonna give you the best possible performance. The patch cord is a critical component. If you have something in the chain between your cable modem and your gaming console that isn't giving you the best possible performance or is dropping packets and you don't know about it. And a lot of home equipment doesn't tell you there's something wrong with the patch cord. It just simply tries to establish the best connection it can get. And it might establish a so-called gigabit connection, but it's not telling you about the 200 packets or so out of the thousand. If it's a gigabit connection, for example, that is dropping in order to maintain that gigabit connection. And, and your your little home router or Wi-Fi, you know, Wi-Fi router or whatever is not telling you that. You need more enterprise level equipment in order to even determine whether or not you're having a problem with your patch cord and you're getting packet drops. And I'm not talking about packet drops to your cable when I'm talking about packet drops between your cable modem and your Xbox. You want to opt for cables that have been thoroughly component rated to the category six standard and certified. And that way, you don't have to guess. One more thing is that these cables are capable from the 6-inch to 25-foot from one power device to another, 10 gigabit. So you don't have to worry about buying CAT 6A. You don't have to worry about CAT 7 or CAT 8. That really is the name of the game. Wiring it and then wiring it with quality cabling. And that, that's how you get there. That pretty well summarizes, encapsulates everything there is about getting the best possible gaming experience. Besides building a really powerful computer with a good graphics card, but I'm sure you've got that part covered. Please leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day. Happy networking and happy gaming. Quick, before the time runs out, if you enjoyed this video, head to our website below, check out our Cable Academy. If you're looking for some new videos, check them out next to me. Thanks for watching.